is settled back leather call worth it. This is the large leather classic briefcase from Saddleback Leather. They have sent this in for an independent review. And these bags are marketed as one of the most durable leather briefcases in the market. And we're gonna see if that holds up true. At first glance, I like the leather. It's natural, naked. It's one of those crazy horse pull-up style rustic leathers. The thickness is very substantial inside it lined with pig skin so definitely you have no doubt about this this bag being leather everything about the design feels rugged and rustic as well very thick hardware throughout the piece layers and layers of leather thick stitching it's not refined work even the the layers of leather are not matched perfectly but again, it kind of feels like the, the rugged and rustic design of this entire style. Um, designed purposely for a specific type of customer, it's not gonna be liked by everyone. If you're into fine work, this doesn't give you that vibe, but if you like rugged and durable stuff, this kind of satisfy you by just its weight. It weighs seven pounds. It's one of the heaviest bags I've ever touched so far, but we're gonna open it up and see in details what's in the background.
As we already know, this is a crazy horse leather. There is no finish on it. Acetone didn't reveal anything. It just pushed the oils further into the leather, showing us the Nubuk base. There is oils and waxes infused on top of a Nubuk leather. You need clean leathers to accomplish this finish. It's a very typical distress crazy horse leather with a good substance. Very good leather choice. Here we see the hair cells, the, the pores of the skin. And there is little fibrous structures which shows us there is a sanding involved here. It's a new book base to accomplish this crazy horse look. So technically this is a top grain leather, but it was listed as full grain. And I understand this um, confusion in the market a little bit. The sanding is not done to remove imperfections. It's done to create that distress effect. You still need clean leathers and you still have most of the grain on the leather. I don't see a problem of listing it as full grain leather. So a full grain on top grain, it's very good leather choice here, but technically there's a little bit buffing. So I would consider it technical top grain leather. The lining they use on this project is the pig skin. It is advertised that it's more durable than the cowhide. Um, yeah, fiber structure wise, that may be true, but the hair intensity is much less in the pig. If you see like these hair pores are very rare, very distributed on the, on the grain. So for that reason, it's not a desirable leather and it's pretty cheap in the leather market. It's one of the cheapest leathers actually you can get coming from an actual animal. And used as a lining material in shoes and bags time to time. Taste wise, it doesn't appeal to me that much. I'm never in, in favor of using pig skin as lining. I think I would prefer a cow lining here or a goat lining a lot better. That will make the piece look a little bit finer than this pigskin choice. But again, it's not a red flag. It might be a personal choice from my end, but I wanted to mention that. There's an insane amount of leather on this project. It took a while for me to calculate it. My estimate is 24 square foot of this beautiful crazy horse leather for the main body of the bag and eight square foot of uh, pig skin for the lining. My leather estimate is $100. And there is quite a bit of heavy accessories, hardware involved. Although it's a rugged craftsmanship, there's a lot of work involved to put it together. My assembly and hardware estimate is $130. The total comes down to $230 to make a bag like this one. Upon dissecting this bag, I really love the leather they used here. This is one of my um, all-time favorite leathers, Distress Crazy Horse Leather. Very well made, very clean hides, super substance. So perfect leather selection for a rugged style bag like this. I even visited the tannery this leather is coming from in Leon a couple weeks ago. I was impressed with the tannery and all the articles they make. So this is a perfectly matching leather choice for a project like this one. And for the craftsmanship, it's a rugged work. It is marketed, advertised as over-engineered. And to be honest, this was one of the most difficult bags to destroy. In my opinion, it almost felt like somebody knew someone would try to destroy this bag at this point and let's make it very difficult. And they, they actually accomplished it. So during my tour to Saddlebags Workshop in Mexico, I've seen a lot of different kind of leather crafts they're making. They're making actually old style trunks with wooden frames, very heavy duty items, very in line with these things. And again, this is my second review from the brand. I actually did a belt before, which almost looked like one of the straps from this, this bag. Um, I, I have three belts out of this deconstruction. Probably I might use some of them as belts. Yeah, it's actually sizing works. So I have three additional belts as a result of this project now. Overall, the Cost estimate of $230 to make a bag like this. The price tag of $690 seems pretty fair in my standards. I usually use three multiplier on top of leather labor and assembly cost. And this is less than that three multiplier. So it actually sounds like a good deal if you like the rugged, durable style, heavy duty leather crafts.